breeding program. What it means that every guard dog is assessed to a certain temperament so then we only breed from the very best quality dogs. So that's why you see a dog like Clover who's so well behaved. Are there any other breeds of dogs uh, besides Labradors that can qualify for guard dogs? Yeah, actually, that's a really good question too because the very first guard dogs were actually German Shepherds, not really? Labradors. Yeah, so um, over the years, Labradors are obviously a very popular breed because um, they're socially accepted and, and people are, um, you know, very familiar with the Labrador. Yeah. And so it became a, a natural breed to use as a, a guard dog because yeah. of their temperament and that they're well-known and well-liked. So and they're quite easy to train as well. Absolutely. But we also use our Golden Retrievers and we also um, have a crossbreed of a Labrador cross golden retriever as well and they make nice guard dogs too. Oh cool. Do they have to be a certain age to be a guard dog? They do. We actually put our puppies out with volunteer families when they're eight weeks old and they spend the first 12 months being socialised. So that means that they'll go to all the places that a working guide dog might go. And then probably another six uh, months being trained. So it means that a dog's around about 18 months to two years when they've undergone all that socialisation and training and are ready to be placed out with a client as a working guide dog. And then you'll feel, you'll hit the tiles on the other side, so you feel them underfoot. Yes. So how does that feel? It feels um, surprisingly safe. Well done. That's good. You're doing really well, following her nicely. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Having learned all that, I spoke to Jodie, who uses a guide dog every day. So Jodie, how did you lose your vision? I lost my vision in my teenage years. I have tumours on the optic nerve which is that big nerve between the brain and the eye that supplies all the information and the tumour just squashed the optic nerve so there's no no information goes back and forward. That's how I lost my vision. So can you tell us what the white cane does? Mm -hmm. This is a white cane, this is a folded up white cane um, and it flips out to being long and you actually um, hold it in front of your body and move it from side to side and it indicates things like steps and poles um, and other obstacles that are in your way so you don't fall down the steps and you don't bang into the obstacle. So Jodie, how long do the dogs work for? It varies but I guess on the um, average about eight years. Some dogs need to retire early for either health reasons or they've come to the end of their working life and some dogs may work a little bit longer. So Jodie, what's so special about having a guide dog? Um, it's a different type of mobility to using the white cane. The dog will actually take you around the objects and quite often you're not even sure they're even there. Um, it just provides greater access to the environment. Um, it's a real big type of teamwork um, and that's sometimes a really nice way to go through the environment. Of course, if you own a dog, you would know that you have to walk it every single day. But there are a few really important tips to remember to keep you and your dog safe. Always walk your dog on a lead to stop him running onto the road in front of a car or scaring other people or dogs. It's better to walk with your dog on your left and close to you so you have good control. Always stop at every road and ask your dog to sit and wait before crossing the road. This teaches him not to run straight across the road if he ever escapes. Remember to give your dog lots of praise and some treats after the walk boy, so he dear. remembers what he learned. Is that yummy? Yeah, good boy. He likes this. Now lots of girls dream of owning a horse, but what does it really take to own and care for a horse properly? I spoke to Dr Luke Ross to find out more. So Dr Luke, before we buy a horse, is there anything we should do first? Yes, Olivia, that's a good question. And you should get your horse checked by a vet. The vet can do what's called a pre-purchase examination and that will allow the vet to examine the horse and tell you about any pre-existing health conditions that the horse might have. And how often do they have to be seen by a vet? 